You know, when the football playoff pairings were announced six weeks ago, most football fans assumed Lockport had little chance of advancing to the 8A championship game, not because the Porters didn't have enough talent, but because just to get there, they'd have to knock off top 10 teams in three consecutive weeks. But as we've seen so many times in the past, especially in high school sports, anything is possible. The Porters proved that last Saturday in Champaign. I tell you what, we couldn't have gone a tougher route. I, you know, realistically, if you designed it on paper, I don't think we could have gone a tougher route, so it's one whale of an accomplishment for our kids. I've been waiting four years for it, and finally came true. I couldn't couldn't have wanted to do it with a better group of guys, better group of coaches. It's 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 amazing. We probably had one of the toughest uh, uh, schedules to get here, but hey, that doesn't matter. I mean. Uh, you got to work hard. The biggest thing that amazed me out of all of this is that week after week they showed up and they were able to continue that focus and able to beat uh, some great football teams on, the, on you know on this path. We play the toughest, uh, toughest regular season, season schedule in, uh, in my mind, and to go through the route, the playoff route that we had to go through, coming back we had to put teams away where we had to. I mean, it's incredible. Uh, Naperville was a very emotional game for us as a staff because of prior years. They came into our house and they played an awesome game, awesome game. We couldn't stop the run, but our defense buckled down the second half and they couldn't stop us on offense. When we were playing Donners Grove, I mean, we knew if we played good that we'd be able to go out and beat them like we did. We just gave it to them. I mean, everybody here just did their best that game. You know, and then a Hinsdale team who was a phenomenal football team. Hinsdale was probably the toughest game we played all year long. We couldn't stop their offense. First play of the game, I was worried. But, I mean, the best motivator is fear. I was a little worried, you know, I'll admit it. But, uh, you know, we took care of business. Spence made an awesome catch. You know, he's awesome. He threw a perfect ball. It was open. It was there. I just had to make the catch. I'll tell you what, guys. You are the most amazing group of kids that I've ever been a part of. When our numbers have been called, we've stepped up. You will never forget this, I promise you. You will never forget it. The ring right on the screen right here. That's what I'm looking forward to. We're getting a ring, baby. We're going all the way. We're going all the way. Are you done yet? We're going to play next week. We're on our way to Memorial Stadium. Go Porters. We're it's taking champagne, baby. Yeah. It's incredible, but... I hate to lose these guys and go on, go on to another team. I wish I could stay with these guys forever. Unbelievable. I mean, it hasn't hit me yet. It's unbelievable. You know, I tell you what, for all the credit in the world to the kids. He's done a great job. Our staff has worked countless, countless hours for, you know, for a long time to get to this. And you know, I'm very proud of everybody. Welcome back to Preps Extra. After starting the year with a four-point loss to top-ranked Downers Grove South, the Porters from Lockport had rolled off seven consecutive wins. They entered their regular season finale with Thornton, one win away from the Sick Blue title. But the Wildcats are loaded with offensive talent. They had different plans for the Porters on Friday. Chris Lockport boasting one of the toughest quarterback-receiver connections in the state. Steve Walker and Spencer Jensen. First quarter, they hooked up to give Lockport the early lead. Didn't last long though, 14 seconds later, Demetrius Rudd takes the handoff from Marcus Randall-L, cuts it upfield, and he's gone. 64-yard touchdown run, Thornton is now within one at 7-6. Walker and Jensen just toying with the Wildcats secondary. Jensen's second touchdown, watch out, 14-6 Lockport. Thornton though, they can hurt you with several different players. Martell Frazier gets the corner, tacks on the two-point conversion, and we're tied at 14. Third quarter, Demetrius Rudd runs in another one, and Thornton is up 20 to 14. But Thornton's lead didn't last long. Walker looks off the safety, comes back to the right side, looking for Jensen. Jensen, 228 yards receiving on the night. It's 21 to 20. Lockport back on top. Move to the fourth quarter. Lockport, they get some breathing room thanks to Anthony Hawthorne's 21-yard touchdown. 27 to 20 Lockport at that point, and just for good measure, Walker launches another one into the stratosphere, looking for Jensen. He's got him, 65-yard pickup, ices this one for Lockport. 
Jensen and the Porters. They are the champs of the Sika Blue. 30 to 20 the final. Porters unbeaten in conference play for the first time in nearly 40 years. You know, sometimes life just doesn't seem fair, but when you're dealt a bum hand, you still have to play the cards. Just ask Naperville North and Lockport, because the new regional seating system in Illinois, these two football powerhouses faced off in just the second round, and our Adam Dew was out in Lockport for the fireworks on Saturday. The Chris, the Porters from Lockport, the champs of the Sika Blue. And the Huskies from Naperville North, they were the runners up in the DuPage Valley. And the Huskies set the tone in this one. In Naperville's first possession, Mike Constantino is in for a 7-0 lead. Lockport's turn, late first quarter, turning a Naperville North turnover into a touchdown. Dave Silva is in. Lockport still down though, 7-6. First play of the second quarter, Naperville North, no problem. Constantino in again. Huskies up 14-6 at the half. Third quarter, Naperville up 14-9. Corey McCune on the run. Great downfield block from Brad Solke. 50 yards. Naperville North has a 21-9 lead with eight minutes left in the third. Late third quarter, the rain starts to fall. Lockport starts to move the ball. Anthony Hawthorne finally is going to get knocked out at the five-yard line. But Steve Walker punches it in from there, and we've got a ball game. Lockport within five at 21-16. Big mistake right here by Naperville North. Deep in Lockport territory, the pick by Rob Weber in the end zone, keeping Lockport's hopes alive. Last chance for Lockport, still down by five. Walker on the run, hits Adam DeClaire inside the 10 yard line. 20 seconds to play. Third and goal from the five, down by five. Walker looking for Joe Trubich, what a catch. What a finish, Lockport wins it. They would tack on the two point conversion, make it a 24 to 21 victory. What a win for the Porters. But the road only gets tougher from here. Lockport, they now get the number one ranked team in Illinois, Downers Grove South. Well, Chris, the defending 8A champs had allowed just 42 points in 11 games prior to Saturday's quarterfinal. But the Porters have one of the best quarterback receiver combos in the state. And they were hoping to light up the scoreboard in Downers Grove. After a quick three and out by DG South, the Lockport duo strikes. Steve Walker for Spencer Jensen. Nice grab, 7-0 Porters. Downers South showing off their passing attack as well. Mike Sharp hits Kent Richard perfectly in stride on the crossing route, and he does the rest. Jensen can't catch him, 84 yards, and just like that, the Mustangs draw even. But the Porters were not phased. Second quarter, Walker connects with Jensen again to put Lockport back on top. A fumbled Lockport punt would set up this TJ Fuller touchdown run for Downers South and we're tied at 14 at the half. Second half now, Lockport offense goes back to work. Walker looking for Vince Giacobbe. Nice leaping grab between two defenders. Porters regain the lead 20 to 14. And they were just getting warmed up. Next possession, Walker rolls out. Gonna just throw one up for Jensen. Jensen out leaps the defender to make a sensational catch. A few plays later, Walker hits Giacobbe in the end zone for his fourth touchdown pass of the game, 26 to 14 quarters. Lockport's defense was equally as impressive. Sean Kostka drills sharp, forcing a fumble. Kevin Jennings recovers, and the Porters were sitting pretty. Walker went back to the air, but this time he's finding Anthony Hawthorne out of the backfield. Hawthorne, a 19 yard gain inside the 10. Two plays later, Hawthorne is in, and the Porters enjoyed a 19-point lead. Late in the game, Downer South down 33-20, trying to get closer, but Jensen steps in front of Sharp's pass, and he's off to the races. 97-yard return. He also had 163 yards receiving. The Porter defense for six turnovers in the game. Lockport unseats the defending 8A champs, and that season opening loss no doubt provided plenty of inspiration for the Porters. And they definitely motivated us, motivated us a lot. I mean, we went, what is it, 11 straight wins, I think? Definitely motivated us. All year we wanted, we wanted revenge, uh, and we got it today, and I think that was one of the most great feelings ever when the, when the horn went off at the end of the game. Lockport piles up nearly as many points in this game as down and south have given up all year, and they make their first trip to the semis. The Porters from Lockport already own victories over Naperville North and Downer South this season. Did they have anything left in the tank for undefeated Hinsdale Central on Saturday? Adam Dew has the highlights. 
Chris, if you were lucky enough to be out in Hinsdale for this game, you will not soon forget it. Two confident, balanced, explosive football teams that use up all 48 minutes. Seems like just about every Lockport game this year decided in the final seconds. Hinsdale Central led by number 14, Illinois-bound quarterback Brad Bauer and number four, tailback Brian gerzel -Lakowski. Bauer making his presence felt on the first play from scrimmage, rolling to his right. He slips one tackle and another, and then he's gone. 65 yards, 17 seconds into the game, 8-0 Red Devils. Bauer is pumped. The Red Devils setting the tone. It's gerzel -Lakowski's turn. Three minutes in, gerzel -Lakowski is off and running. 50 yards, it's 14 to nothing, Hinsdale Central. And we're just getting warmed up. Late first quarter, Lockport finally gets in the end zone. Steve Walker to Vince Giacobbe, and the Porters are on the board. Lockport quarterback Steve Walker could do no wrong. Nearly sacked, somehow gets it away. Giacobbe is in again, and we're tied at 14. Under a minute to play in the half. Bauer floats one over the middle to his tight end. Trey Koziel, Hinsdale Central, goes back on top 2014 at the half. Third quarter, Bauer with one of the most amazing four-yard touchdown runs you'll ever see. Hinsdale Central takes a 26-14 lead, but Lockport would not fold. They would pull back within 26-21, and then Walker is gonna be looking for Doug Kinney. 15-yard touchdown, and Lockport has its first lead, 27-26. Nine minutes left in the game. Gerzelikowski's in, Hinsdale back up, 32-27. Very next play from scrimmage. Lockport at midfield. Walker wants it all. Aiming for Randy Griffin. He's got him. 34-32 Lockport. Very next play from scrimmage. That's right. Three plays, three straight touchdowns. Bauer to Christian Arquila. 8.30 left in the game. It's 38-34 Hinsdale Central. Same score. Two minutes left in the game. Bauer also the punter. Nice kick. Pins the Porters. Back at their four-yard line. Lockport now 96 yards away with 140 to play. And here they come. Walker looking for All-State wideout Spencer Jensen. He's finally brought down at the 14 with 45 seconds left. Fourth and four from the eight. Walker finds Joe Trubich to keep the drive alive. Fourth and goal from the two. Down by four, nine seconds to play. Walker looking for Jensen. And he's got it. Lockport wins it 41-38. Walker more than 450 yards passing for the game. None tougher than the last two. Steve threw a perfect ball. It was open. It was there. I just had to make the catch. If I would have dropped that, though, man, so I was a little worried, you know, I'll admit it. But, uh, you know, we took care of business. Spence made an awesome catch. You know, he's awesome. You will never forget this, I promise you. You will never forget it. We're on our way to Memorial Stadium. Go Porters. We're staying in Champaign, baby. Yeah. Are you done yet? No. Champagne next week. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Lockport moves on to the 8A state finals. Here's the 8A state championship. Lockport versus Stevenson. Yeah! Chris, it was cold out in Champaign on Saturday, but the fans were fired up. The Porters of Lockport led by their all-state duo of quarterback Steve Walker and receiver Spencer Jensen. They've hooked up for 15 touchdowns this year. The Patriots do have some weapons of their own, however, most notably quarterback Bob Giannini who doubles as an All-State defensive back. And it was Stevenson who would strike first. Opening minutes of the game, Brian Jabeck picks up 17 yards inside the five. Next play, Jabeck gets in for a 7-0 Patriot lead. Lockport's offense struggled throughout most of the first half but it was Walker's legs, not his arm, that got them going. With no one open downfield, he takes off, picks up 28 yards down to the 20. Very next play, under 30 seconds left in the half. Walker looking for Jensen. He hits him on a crossing pattern. Jensen finds the end zone and we're tied at seven at the break. But Jensen was in for a rude awakening on the first play of the second half. Joey Bonadonna slips behind him. Giannini finds him for a pretty 71-yard score to put Stevenson ahead again, 14 to seven. We lose the ball. Take care of your snaps, take care of the ball. Lockport certainly didn't panic. Instead, they responded with an 11-play, 75-yard drive. Walker finds Jensen. Jensen makes a few guys miss, picks up 22. Dan Brady would cap the drive with this two-yard run to tie the score at 14. 
Lockport took their first lead on this Anthony Hawthorne touchdown run near the end of the third quarter. And then after another 11 play drive, Hawthorne is in again, this time from 13 yards out, and all of a sudden it's 28-14 quarters. With time running out on Stevenson, the last thing they needed was this. Giannini's pass is tipped and intercepted by Greg Mackey. He returns at 42 yards up near midfield. That set up one last memorable connection for the two Lockport All-Staters. Walker finished with 333 yards while Jensen caught seven balls for 123. Dave Slee will put the finishing touch on the Porter victory with a 10-yard touchdown run. No last-second drama needed this week. Lockport can celebrate. They are the state champions in Class 8A. It's their first state title in school history. Stevenson's runner-up finish, the best they've ever done, but the Porters win the ultimate prize. The road they've had to travel, they certainly earned it. The biggest thing that amazed me out of all of this is how week after week they showed up and they were able to continue that focus and able to beat uh, some great football teams on, uh, you know, on this path. I've been waiting four years for it and finally came true. I couldn't, couldn't want to do it with a better group of guys, better group of coaches. It's, it's, it's amazing. Unbelievable. I mean, it hasn't hit me yet. It's unbelievable.